Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here alongside... Kate from Tested. And it's been a while since we've done one of these videos. It has. But we are back with some model behavior and we're going back to some basics. Yes. Uh, today we're going to be experimenting with a way of making uh, a diorama base, mm -hmm. uh, which we love. It's so much fun not only to make your models, but the bases. And there are a bunch of different tutorials I've watched on how to make a uh, fake sidewalk. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, artificial concrete cement is one of the most fun things to do. And this is a really fun method. Yeah, I, I, it was almost like the Everyone has a different philosophy. You can yep. do it plaster, you can use all, all different types of paint surfaces. We're gonna be using foam. Yep. And this is just XPS pink foam, insulation foam, yep. extruded polystyrene. You normally would use it for like sculpting. Yep, I use the thicker stuff and you can shave it down. It can do anything. Uh, and we found that you can buy these now in pre-cut one foot by one foot at various thicknesses. So we're using a half inch thickness, mm -hmm. goes down to a quarter inch, uh, but you can do like one inch, whatever works best for you. So something like this could perfectly fit inside like an Ikea you know, Expedit, Calax, or yeah. your Detolf shelf, Yeah. right? As your diorama base. Um, to create the sidewalk, I think we're gonna start by just kind of designing our, our grid. Sure, drawing out our lines. So Kate, as we're starting, I think the first thing we're going to consider is what the scale is going to be. Exactly. Uh, I know that you have uh, some projects that you wanted to try and use this for. Do you have a scale that you want to go for? Yes, I love 1-6 scale. Yeah. So everything, if it's uh, a, a normally a 6 foot tall person, would be 1 foot tall, yes. or however many inches, divide by 6. So doing some basic Googling uh, at, you know, different, depending where you live, a standard sidewalk square <laughs> is roughly 36 inches. I think 48 inches, you know, is, is like the max. Sure. ADA compliance, right? <laughs> uh, so at 36 inches, gives me a little bit of versatility on the small side. So yeah. you use sort of maybe one eighth scale, one twelfth scale, divide that by six. So I'm thinking maybe five to six inch sure. squares. All right. Six scale is very common for stop motion. Now we're starting off just using some pencil, not making a uh, ton of indents on here because it is very soft foam. It's very soft foam. Um, so it helps if you have a square, but you can also do it with a ruler. Or in my case, two rulers. When you're trying so hard not to make too much of a dent and you're making really light lines, it's so easy to then lose them. I'm like, I made a mark, where'd it go? I just went with the basic six inch, so I have four squares. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I did a little offset so I can have a little intersection. Yeah. Um, so after we've drawn out our grid, and again, this is very soft foam, so even with a pencil, you're gonna make an indent, but if you're happy with it, that's great. Uh, then we can make a bigger indent using an X-Acto blade or a sculpting tool. Yeah, I'm thinking because this foam is so soft, an X-Acto blade can slice right through it so cleanly, you might not even see anything. But using more of a blunt object, uh, you're gonna be able to get that indent you're looking for. So a blunt object can be a wooden sculpting tool. Yeah. Honestly, a blunt, like, Edge of piece of wood. Yeah, right? like if I really wanted to, I could have just made it with this pencil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now this is not a very sharp pencil, so keep that in mind. That would be better for this is using a more dull pencil. There you go. There you go. I'm gonna flip this over onto the back and just experiment with how this looks, so I know what kind of pressure to use. Kate, I'm going to err on the side of going deeper okay. because I know we're going to be laying paint on this yes. and I want them to show. I want the relief of these sidewalk dents to show. Uh, one thing I'm also doing is I'm, I'm not worrying about my precision, about how straight necessarily these lines are, a little mm -hmm. bit of wobble. Because if you look at sidewalk, it's it's like there's imperfections oh, in, totally. even in the laying of the lines. Yeah. 
I think the other benefit of using a dull instrument to do this is that you can get a little bit of the, um, I don't know, what would you call that? The chamfered Chamfer, edge. Chamfer, yes, yes. Which would be more prominent at this scale. Yes. At this point, now that I have my grid laid out, I'm kind of going back through and adding in some of the imperfections around the edges, you know, maybe it's not a super tight 90 degree corner. Mm, mm. And at the same time, I'm going in and I'm just making cracks. There you go. Keep it simple. Yeah. How far is too far is always a question, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love like the, the veining of that crack you have there. Right? And I like to, because in my mind, some of these cracks are going to be finer than how thick the um, space between the squares are. So I'm going in with a, a finer tool to try and do some of that detail work. Just playing with scale. There are also spots where my foam already had some imperfections in it. There's, you know, bits of dents here and there. There's a little bit of cracking here. There was sort of a, a line in it already. So something that's cool is that use the material for what it already is giving you. I think that those are going to probably look pretty cool. Okay, so you, you alluded to this, but it's, it's soft foam and we want to use any of the imperfections. We, in fact, want to build imperfections. Yes. Uh, and one of the most fun things I've learned from watching other people do this type of diorama is how to lay down imperfections on XPF's foam. And you see the foil here. It's material you've used before. Oh, yeah. uh, but the kind of, I think the secret sauce, the magic of this is literally taking a foil and rolling into a ball, which we're gonna do. We're gonna create a foil ball and use that as a tool yeah. to create our imperfections. It's basically gonna turn into like a stamp of sorts. Again, I'm going to do a little bit of testing on the back to let me know how hard I need to push, if I need to play with the texture of this ball at all. Mm -hmm. In the same vein, the way I crumple this is uneven too. I have a denser crumpling on one yeah. side and a softer crumpling just to see. The effect is immediate, Kate. Yes. And something that's neat about having a sort of lopsided ball is that as you roll it, you're going to get uneven patterning, which is exactly what you want when you're distressing something because it's not going to be perfectly cookie cutter. I'm right. going to go for it. You feeling ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling ready. Now, like you alluded to, we're planning on doing an acrylic paint job on top of this. So if this were going to be a spray job and the paint was going to be very thin, I might try to go very light in my patterning. But because acrylic tends to be thicker and is going to build up a little bit, like you said, it's okay to go deeper make it more pronounced. I think the irregularity is the part that like, you have to constantly almost think about. Yeah. Like, oh, am I going lighter here on the square? Yeah. It's hard because your instinct is like a coloring book, right? Like fill in this whole section. <laughs> but you got to pull back and go, no, less is more in some spots. Ooh, I'm actually really liking what it's doing to some of my cracks. Yeah. Because the pressure itself from rolling the ball over it is kind of smashing bits of the foam around. So it's changing the shape of my distress that I've already added. But for that purpose, I'm actually avoiding rolling over my seam lines because mm. I think those should be a little bit more regular. What's cool is that the other thing to remember is as, as opposed to just a surface texture, um, the amount of pressure you use can change the shape of the actual top layer of foam, which is much more realistic. Like 
there's a bit of an undulation in a piece of sidewalk. So if you push harder in one spot and it's, you know, not totally flat, that is all the better. <laughs> I nice? love it. Now my worry is I love it as is. So does that mean I need to actually do it more so that it shows through the paint? Yeah, because this is one of those things where you can't, you kind of can't go back. Right. I guess you do a first layer of paint, wait for it to dry, and then do more, true, more stippling. True, true. Um, because I would be happy if this were my finished texture, but I know that it's not going to be. So I might, I might go a little heavier. I might regret this later, but we'll see. Okay, Kate, it's time for painting, which is going to reveal this, we can call it sculptural work. Yeah, I think so. Um, can you talk through the painting philosophies of the layering process? Yeah, so uh, one of the first things we've already decided we're going to be using acrylic paint. Uh, you may be tempted to spray paint a surface like this, and at least in my experience, uh, spray paint melts this kind of foam. So I lean towards acrylics. Again, that could build up a, a little bit of a layer, so you wanna um, have that in mind. We're going to mix up some gray and then apply with some foam brushes. This will help ensure a thinner coat and any texture that's left behind is only gonna be in our favor because this sponge is gonna look a bit better than brush strokes. Yeah, and you know we'll be mixing this, but the gray that we're looking for doesn't necessarily have to be the th what we think of a sidewalk gray. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, make it look like however you want it to. Yeah. Enough opportunities to lighten it up, darken it up as yeah. we get through yeah. the different layers. After we have a base layer on, we can play with doing some highlights, doing some washes, aging it down. So right now it's all about just getting our base layer on. Okay, Kate, now on to paint color number two. Yes, so uh, we, are, we did our base color. Now I think we're gonna do some highlights where we are gonna try, we're gonna experiment with a little bit of rough and, rub and buff. Uh, if we don't like that, we can also just try some more um, acrylic and do a bit of a dry brush on. If you've noticed previously um, when you've looked at sidewalks, as it wears down, it's not like a lot of things where the more wear it has, the darker it is. There's actually a lot of light color that mm. comes through. So we're gonna try and see if we can capture a little bit of that before we go in with some darker color. And this is not the nooks and crannies. No, this, this, is... Is, this is gonna be the, the top, the high spots around here. I'm just gonna start by gently rubbing the tops of some of this texture and seeing how it goes. I'm really careful when I start out not to get too much on my finger because you don't want to just smear a white streak across. So I tend to rub it out a little bit before I go. And rub and buff has that nice chalky yeah. texture when it dries. It's gonna help here. I think it's actually between this and a wash that will fix any issues we have with finish, like sheen with the um, acrylic. So I think that will be a good thing. It's so hard to see. And you're sneaking up on it.
Okay, okay. So we did two different approaches yes. to the highlights. Uh, you used rubber buff with just through your gloves. Yep. Uh, and talk, tell me about how you're applying it. Um, so I was getting a bit on my finger, rubbing it around to really flatten it out a little bit first. And then I would just go in and try and hit all the high spots, especially you want to get along these um, ridges here uh, on the tops of any of the um, cracks around the edges. And then really just trying to pull out some of that texture and streaking. You know, there were a few spots where I'd get a little too much rub and buff, but there's only so much you can do to fix that. I think it works. Yeah, and same here with using uh, a chip brush. Again, not a little bit goes so much a long way. Yeah. It was really easy to fall in that trap of leaving too much on the tip of one yes. side of a brush or something, yeah. where you would then get the streaking. And so I tried to compensate for some of that with a little bit of stippling, um, and then realizing because of the size of the head of this brush, a lot of that also looks end up being very samey. Yeah. Right, because the, the, the places where I'm kind of stippling on, it's only going to be the size of that brush. So trying right. to group those together and vary those in size. And it's really easy to get lost in it. It is. Right? You, have to, you a, have to remind yourself to stop yeah. and take a step back and, yeah. and reevaluate. Yeah, it's such a slow change that, you know, you, you might feel like you were done or you, you might go past the point where <laughs> you want. Yes, the past, past the point of no return yeah. for sure. Um, okay. So we have a base coat, we have these highlights. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's time for a wash. It is, I think this is everybody's favorite step, right? It's going to bring out all of these great details. It's going to really sell it. I think that once you get the shadows in, you're gonna be quite surprised at how good it looks. Uh, and for the wash, we have something that Adam and I use when we were doing some weathering on our Razor Crest models. Yeah. And this is a Vallejo Game Wash. It's a dipping formula. So Ooh. it is almost like immediate capillary effect. Very thin. Yeah. We didn't need to water this down at all. It's made to dip little small figures. Um, but I've had success using this a little bit of it and then kind of patting it with uh, a towel. Nice. Oh, this is exciting. I've only ever made my own washes, so this could be a game changer for me. <laughs> Let's try it. I'm gonna go for real messy concrete, Kate. Oh, you don't want clean and tidy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this concrete's seen some stuff. Oh yeah. What's its backstory? <laughs> it's, been, it's walked its on its whole life. Character arc, yes. Both of us are just starting off on the seam lines here, because I think we we understand that that's where we want the the, the dirt and grime would have sat. Yes. But I feel like it's going to be covering the entire oh yeah my entire palette here by the I, end. I always tend to start very conservative and like really light and and gingerly place here and there, and then once I get my confidence up and I I notice how it's working and how I like it, then I just go hog wild. And I was saying this earlier, I really do like using t-shirt rags because there's much less of a pattern. Mm. There's no thick texture that you're gonna accidentally leave behind. I mean, sometimes you want that, but uh, in most of my cases, I, I wanna make sure that I'm rubbing with something very smooth. Are you happy? Are you finding some details being brought more prominent with this? Totally, and also the unevenness I love of the concrete. Even the, because it's drying very quickly, yeah. there's a lot of overlapping. Yeah. And I find that is adding to the history of this, these individual pieces of sidewalk. New York and Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Gotham. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you.
Kate, I love how we're going for very different styles. <laughs> I know I, I tend to lean into like super subtle realism and I love that you're like, no, this needs to be dark, dark. and it's great. Yours is definitely more interesting than mine. Impatient. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what it's, mine is, it's impatient concrete. Kate, that looks beautiful. Uh, see, I'm thinking mine looks so boring next to yours. Yours looks like there's something oh. fun and happening. I think what it speaks to is like we all have this idea of what concrete looks like. Yeah. And it can be so many different things. We've yeah. all walked and run in all different types of weather. And so there's so much, it's a wide range yeah. of what it can be. Uh, which means you can make, you can have fun with it. You can make a lot of mistakes. You could lean into one direction. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's a, such a fun simple project it is i i am i had a lot more fun than i expected to <laughs> i could do this for hours and this template this format i mean the fact that you can get a piece of foam one by one yeah half inch um and materials are all super cheap you can mix your own wash you can mix your own base coat yep. literally just black and white and just different different uh, mixings of those yeah it, it's really great honestly you could do this whole thing with just a tube of white and a tube of black you do your you mix it and get your gray for your base you take your white and you do your highlights and you mix your black with some stuff to do a wash like that's all you need one of our first model behavior videos was you showing me how to do wood paneling wood flooring which mm -hmm. we still have in this workshop and i feel like now that we've come back to doing this doing more surfaces at different scales is yeah. something we should continue doing i would love that this is something that i can totally get lost in it's my favorite and hope you guys enjoyed it too and we'll be back next time thank you so much for watching bye i think i think i should call it done before i ruin it stop me from myself yeah. kate the point is to ruin it early and so then you try to go <laughs> full circle all the way around to something salvageable yes then you can feel really yes. good when you stop <laughs>